Now, I would like to describe a test case for bicameral mentality in order to demonstrate the worldwide evidence of Jamesian neural theology. In an article called Talking Moai, Farron McIntyre applies a Jamesian approach in order to explain the purpose of the 50 ton, 14, four, excuse me, 14 foot high anthropomorphic megaliths, or Moai, of Easter Island, the Rapa Nui. Now, tradition claims that the Moai walked themselves to the temple platforms called Abu, upon which they stood. And of course, we're probably all familiar with the famous, uh, uh, with the famous photographs of these Moai. These imposing carvings were not the only source of narrow theological voices. The inhabitants of Easter Island apparently also listened to Aku Aku, spiritual guides. They also heard as did the early Mesopotamians, their written language speak from what were called Rongu Rongu boards. Now, Rongo was a Polynesian god associated with sound, speaking, hearing, singing, thunder. Due to overpopulation and resource exploitation, the bicameral society of Rapa Nui seems to have broken down as late as 1500, so that's debatable. Though James himself did not treat Easter Island, McIntyre notes, to quote, that Rapa Nui seems made to order as a test case for Jamesian theory. Moai form a perfect example of what James described. McIntyre lists features from, uh, from Rapa Nui that, quote, suggest a Jamesian interpretation. And what I want to do now is quickly go down the list of some of these, uh, some of these items, some of these features. First, the imposing statues were they did not represent, they were dead authority figures. In other words, they were not just memorials to dead chiefs or religious icons. They offered, through spoken language, leaders of the island practical advice about tribal concerns, according to Matthew. Moai were recycled, presumably when the voices stopped because the memory of an ancestor figure faded into oblivion. Note that there was something personal about these statues. Each was given individual features, presumably because they manifested the voice commands of an actual personage. The size of Moai had an apparent significance, perhaps related to the fact that as their voices became harder to hear, their dimensions increased and became bigger. Other exopsychic functions meant to elicit speech from the statues are evident in ritual invocations, such as ceremonial fires. Overthrowing a Moai was regarded as a serious attack on its followers, depriving them of a valuable resource. The more Moai who had, the stronger it became. However, the statues, quote, could not be created arbitrarily since they needed someone to speak through them. As in other ancient cultures, statuary eyes were significant. Of course, James spent a lot of time in this book talking about the significance of eyes in uh, ancient god statues from Mesopotamia. The installation of the inlaid eyes was a formal ritual, probably with the same import as washing of the mouth ceremonies that you find in uh, ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Apparently, the eyes were hunted down and broken when Moai were overthrown. To conclude, I suggest an answer to uh, the question I began with, what is religion? I argue that religion is not the belief in gods. Rather, it is the uneasy existentialist justification and explanation of their existence. In this sense, before around the first millennium BCE, religion did not exist, or at least religion as we think of it did not exist. Religion arose during the Axial Age. This is a period described by the philosopher and psychiatrist Carl Jasper as pivotal in humankind's history. Lasting from approximately 800 to 200 BCE, according to Jasper, it was around this time that theories developed about why the gods left us. During this time, strikingly similar philosophical and early scientific ideas appeared in Greece, the Middle East, China, and India. For our purposes, the significance of the Axial Age is evident in how it clearly crystallized post bicameral intellectual trends, such as abstract thinking, a linear view of history, self-reflexivity, and spiritual skepticism, or disbelief. It was during this time that people became haunted by a search for the departed gods, at least those who were still interested in listening to the gods. 
The Axial Age was the foundation upon which the scientific revolution was built some 20 centuries later. It was also a global reaction to the loss of a mural theology suited to a time when the gods walked the earth. And about 30 centuries after the gods left us, the existentialism of Kierkegaard and Nietzsche appeared, which, in evolutionary terms, is a mere blink of the eye in our search for answers, whether these answers are spiritual, scientific, or secular. 